Hi, my name is Kate Meredith, and I'm the President and Director of Education at Glass Education in Williams Bay, Wisconsin. In September, I'm going to be moderating a panel for the Archive Accessibility Forum 2024 on data sonification. I'm Robin Williams. I'm a research statistician from Exeter in the UK. I have a PhD in statistics in the field of applied weather forecasting, and I now work in industry as a sports statistician, researching the use of statistical modeling to predict sporting events, make use of various access technologies, including speech, braille, and sonification is also a big part of my workflow. Hello, everyone. My name is Amy Bauer. I'm a physical oceanographer at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution in Massachusetts. I've been in this field for more than 30 years, and over that time, I have um, lost most of my useful vision. And therefore, to continue my research, I've been exploring different ways to display and analyze data. And one of those uh, methods is uh, data sonification. Um, hi, my name is Sarah Kane. I am a PhD student at the Institute of Astronomy at the University of Cambridge. Uh, my primary research interest is, um, is in a field that we call galactic archaeology, which means that I use stars to help us retrace the history of the Milky Way, our very own galaxy. I also happen to be legally blind or have low vision, which means I can see a little bit, but not very well generally. And through that, I started an interest in what I call my quote unquote side gig in astronomy, um, which is sonification, which is what brings me here today. And in sonification, I've done various things ranging from co-teaching a non-visual data science tutorial series where we taught participants how to sonify their data to doing some usability testing to uh, for, for Astronify, which is a Space Telescope Science Institute created sonification program to most recently uh, working with Kim Arkand and Jess Stasek and others to work on a paper where we uh, survey participant responses to sonifications of NASA data. Hi, my name's Scott Fleming. I'm an astrophysicist at the Space Telescope Science Institute, which is located in Baltimore, Maryland in the United States. Um, my team uh, works on the search interfaces for uh, NASA space telescopes, which include Hubble, uh, the JWST telescope, the upcoming Nancy Grace Roman telescope, the TESS exoplanet hunting telescope, and quite a variety of historical uh, missions as well. Um, and uh, as part of that, our mission is to make all these data sets accessible to the world uh, for everyone to be able to benefit from. And as part of that, I've been working a lot on alternative ways of making that data uh, accessible to people with uh, different needs. Uh, and that's why I'm in, interested in sonification. My name is Fia Damsma, and I'm the creative director of SonoKids Australia. I'm originally from the Netherlands, where I co-founded SonoKids about 25 years ago with uh, John Nergaard. Hello, my name is Leif Karlstrom. I am a volcanologist at the University of Oregon. And I'm really excited to be a part uh, of the event in September having to do with accessibility in the sciences. I study volcanoes and volcanoes are spectacular features that deserve to be both seen and heard. Uh, my work has been developing ways of representing volcanic data through sound, through the process of sonification. And I'll be talking about some of the techniques that we use to sonify data uh, and how you might be able to use these techniques uh, in your own work. Now, data sonification is specifically looking at the use of sound as applied to large data sets in science to both increase accessibility and to provide us with another uh, modality in which to explore data sets. And sound and hearing have a lot of advantages over vision and used with vision in the right way developed with a diverse group of people 
can um, has a potential to incredibly increase our capacity to explore data sets in different ways. So the panel that's been assembled is a great group of people that you don't want to miss who have a background in developing sonifications, working with large data sets, and the lived experience with a vision impairment. And so they're going to be able to talk to us about many of the aspects of sonification. Some years ago, during my PhD studies, a colleague and I developed an R package that provides the ability to turn two-dimensional uh, plots of data into soundscapes. The package can be used to sonify functions, for example, y equals x squared, or to provide an estimate of the trends and shape of data in a scatter plot. It has features that enable the user to identify areas of the plot that are of interest. For example, the soundscape can be augmented with white noise when the value of the plot falls within some predefined interval. Not only was the package a valuable asset during my PhD, it remains a tool I use regularly in my workflow today. At a sonification conference session, I would demonstrate the R package and mention some features I would like to add. I'm also very open to ideas as to how the package could be extended and improved. So why should you attend this event? Well, sonification is a great way of learning new things about a data set. It's also a great way of conveying information uh, to a, in an accessible way to a broader audience. Um, and I, I tend to think about both of those things when I'm doing sonifications of volcanic data. I started the Volcano Listening Project as a way to communicate science as well as the sonification techniques. Uh, if you come to the event, um, you could check out volcanolisteningproject.org for some examples of our work. I'll be going through examples that are on that page and so uh, that will prepare you best for interacting and asking questions. We're inspired to develop a new Bolliland app called Cosmo Bolli on Sono Planet where you can use sonification to hear shapes and identify where the aliens are hiding on Sono Planet. And let me introduce you to Cosmo Bolli. She is the astronaut from Bolli Land. And like all Bolli Landers, she is shaped like a ball. So her helmet or spacesuit are white with red stripes, shaped like a ball with red earpieces on each side. And she has a microphone and an antenna. And she is your guide on Sono Planet, the weird planet that she discovered recently and where everything is sonified. So if you want to learn more about this app and about our way of accessible educational sonification for young children, please come and see us at the Archive Accessibility Forum in September. So why might you be interested in attending the event? Well. A lot of you may not know what sonification is or don't really know how you might be able to apply it for yourselves and people you know. Sonification definitely has a role to play in accessibility of STEM as a profession, but it's also very useful for analyzing and interpreting complex data, data that change over time in ways that complement and supplement and augment more traditional visual methods. It really is a tool that's underutilized and under taught uh, across the field. And so by attending this event, you might be able to see some examples from professional researchers using sonification or developing sonification tools today and get a sense of how it might be useful for yourself or your teams or your students now and in the future. Uh, as far as the use of data sonification in ocean science research, such as I do, uh, that is in its infancy. Um, and I hope to work with others to try to bring um, what has been already learned and applied in, for example, astronomy uh, to a very high level uh, to the ocean and other uh, earth sciences uh, where it's rarely used um, for research. 
I really encourage all people to come to the archives uh, sonification session. It's going to be really informative, regardless of whether or not you yourself are blind, low vision, or work with that community. One of the things we speak about often in sonification is that even though uh, it's often quote unquote like marketed as an accessibility tool, and in fact, the way I became interested in it is because it makes things more accessible for me, because it has this potential to make things more accessible. That doesn't mean that sonification is only useful to blind low vision people. Um, so this all comes back to this idea of universal design, this idea that sonification and other quote unquote accessibility tools are just useful for everyone. And so I would encourage people to come to the sonification session to use to learn about the broad applications of sonification, how useful it is and can be to many people and why there's really good reasons to invest time and resources in continuing to make sonifications uh, more mainstream and more flexible for many use cases. So in 2020, Glass founded the Sonification World Chat, and we've been talking about how to uh, create a highly perceivable and interpretable data sonifications for use in science, education, outreach, and career development for the last four years. So I am now uh, the self-proclaimed den mother of data sonification, and I can't wait to see how this conversation in September advances our, um, our mission. So I look forward to seeing you here, and uh, don't forget to check out all the other profiles of the panelists who will be part of this forum. For more information about the Sonification World Chat learning community that meets quarterly, go to sonificationworldchat.org. That's all one word, sonificationworldchat.org.